Hello guys, welcome to session 3 of one shot series for physics, KCT 2023. Today I'll be doing a chapter motion in a straight line in one shot. This is different from motion in a plane, this is not kinematics as a whole, you'll have to go for session 4 in that case. The videos have been a bit slow, you know, they've been coming out a bit slow because I've been having a couple of entrances to prepare for. Uh, but I'll make sure that I'll be completing, you know, all the videos by your exam end. So yeah, and one more thing, the presentation will be improved soon, I'm sorry for this kind of a presentation. The software which I used to use, uh, they, they started to ask me for money in order to use it further and also I don't have a writing pad I'm using a mouse so please pardon me for the bad handwriting also so uh, without any uh, you know and before watching this video I would recommend you to watch the orientation session too so that you can get an idea of what to do after watching this video so yeah the link will be in the description and I think now we can continue so these are a few basic terms as you might know distance can be positive or zero displacement can be negative zero positive and velocity can be negative zero positive and I'll be using this notation for velocity throughout the video And then for speed, I'll be using this notation, which actually itself is a formula. Speed is basically the magnitude of velocity vector. So as you can see, the symbol, um, you know, the two lines mean its magnitude. So magnitude of velocity vector is speed. And I'll be using this notation throughout the video. It can be positive and zero. So we'll be going to the next part. As you can see, this notation basically means average. So whatever is inside, let's say it is example t. So it means average time and so on. So over here, as you can see, this notation over here means average velocity. And this notation, uh, this means average speed and this means average velocity. As you can see, I've used only this. And over here, it's average speed. So average speed is total distance by total time, as you can see. And then average velocity can be the sum of all the velocity vectors by the total number of velocity vectors or you can use this formula and this formula is used more often so I'll be putting a box around it which is x2 minus x1 by t2 minus t1 where x is displacement and t is time as you might know so yeah I'll be putting a box around it I'll be going to the next part which is calculus in motion in a straight line in a straight line so as you know dx by dt which means rate of change of displacement where x is displacement is actually velocity and then dv by dt which means rate of change of velocity is acceleration and then using um, the writing dv by dt as dv by dx dot dx by dt as you can see dx by dt is nothing but velocity this way we can derive um, this equation over here <coughs> the formula over here which you have to know because just, yeah the reason why you have to know this is because when you send uh, v over here like when you basically divide it by v this entire thing it will be dv by dx is equal to a by v which means the slope of an av graph acceleration versus velocity graph will be dv by dx so yeah it's useful useful for that and one more thing that you have to know is acceleration is double differentiation of uh, rate of uh, double differentiation of x with respect to t so yeah they might have keep, uh, give, they might give you v or x as a function of time and you have to differentiate and you, you can solve past paper questions to get an idea so i'll be moving further yeah, further would be graphs. Students uh, tend to get confused in this, but I've put it in an orderly fashion of five different graphs that you have to know. When an object is basically at rest, as you can see, when an object is at rest, it'll be like this. S, by the way, over here, ST means displacement versus time, BT means velocity versus time, and AT means acceleration versus time. So yeah, this notation will be used throughout this graph section. So VT will become like this, and AT will become like this. When it's constant velocity, ST will be like this, and velocity, as you can see, is a constant value, so it should be a straight line, and acceleration versus time will be over here. When it's constant acceleration, acceleration should be a constant value, so velocity should be like this, and S should be like this. So as you can observe there will be a pattern and as you practice more you'll be able to get a hang of it so here when it's retardation it should be like this st and vt like this because it's negative slope when it's retar retardation and this should be a negative constant at graph so yeah for increasing acceleration as you can see it should be like this vt graph and then acceleration time will be like this as you can see it's like increasing so yeah that's graph section five different graphs you have to know all of them it's very important uh, you never know how it will be you know coming into use so i'll be going to the next part that will be the type of problems that they ask. So one type of problem that they ask is, let's say an object starts from one point and moves to another point. So it covers distance d1 with velocity v1 and the other distance d2 with velocity v2 and the entire distance is d. So as you know, average speed, you can use the general formula which I mentioned, total distance by total time. But instead of writing d1 plus d2 as total distance, just write d which would have been given in the problem divided by t1 plus d2. So for t1 plus d2, you have to use, uh, to get the value of t1, you have to use our, uh, you know, old-fashioned formula speed is equal to distance by time but you have to make it as t is equal to distance by speed so when you do that it will be t1 is equal to d1 by v1 and t2 is equal to d2 by v2 and you can put it in place of t1 and t2 to get this formula which is very important so another type of problem which actually comes would be that let's say a boat it's moving downstream along the water then it will be velocity of boat plus velocity of water and let's say a boat is moving upstream opposite to the flow of water then it will be velocity of boat minus velocity of water so I'm, um, I'm assuming this speed and everything is fine if not you can actually slow it down on YouTube you can watch on 0.75x yeah, it's up to you. Next concept that I'll be moving towards is relative motion. As you can see over here, this formula is very important. It can uh, be even acceleration or S, which means displacement. So relative acceleration, let's say relative acceleration is asked, then it should be A12 
is equal to a1 minus a2. Uh, one thing you have to know, however, is how to read this. So v12 with a bar on top means its velocity vector. So how we have to read this is velocity of 1 with respect to 2. So if it's vab, then it means its velocity of a with respect to v, but you have to make sure that you put this, which is actually going to be equal to velocity of a minus velocity of b. So this is how you have to write it for velocity of a b. But I've written it for 1, 2. You have to know how to read it, as I've just mentioned. And you can use it for others. So what's, uh, what's the next thing over here? It's going to be Galileo's uh, law of odd numbers, which means for an object which is freely falling, the distance covered in that t second. So s1 means distance covered in first second. s2 means distance covered in second second, and so on, till distance covered in nth second. So that distance will always be in this ratio, 1 is to 3 is to 5, so on, 2 and minus 1, which means it'll be an odd number ratio. That's why the name Galileo's law of odd numbers. And uh, however, yeah, you, they have generalized this for any type of problem whereas if it's given uniform motion or uniform acceleration then you can use this it'll make your life um, less complicated if they have not mentioned then you have to go for distance or displacement uh, this is not distance sorry this is displacement so displacement covered in nth second as you can see uh, is equal to distance displacement in n second minus displacement in n minus one second which means let's say a body has traveled till here in n second so this for only this much only for this much you have to basically calculate this displacement and this displacement, and when you subtract it, you'll be able to get this displacement. So I hope you're able to understand. If not, you can comment and you can join the Telegram group. Uh, by the way, as I've uh, not mentioned in the other videos, I've basically created a Telegram group. From now, you can join the Telegram group for all queries. You can ask me doubts, everything for free of cost, as you know, um, I do everything for free of cost. So yeah, I'll be going on to the next part of the chapter, which would be, before this, I'll be doing equations of motion, as you guys can see here. This is something which you might have been learning from literally, I think, 7th grade, I'm not sure. So equations of motion, V is equal to U plus AT, S is equal to UT plus half AT square, and V square is equal to U, U square plus 2AS. And you have to keep one thing in your mind, this is all for uniform acceleration. And if, let's say, a motion is under gravity, which is falling downwards, then A is replaced by minus G in all these equations. So yeah, this is something which you might know. And now that can make us move towards this type of problem, which would be yeah so let's say a body if it's written that a body is dropped then in that case you have to take u is equal to zero and put it in the equation of motion same way let's say a body is thrown upwards like this let's say it's given in a question that's thrown upwards and it falls back downwards to know this distance which it has reached until it stops and then starts falling down it's common sense that at this point where it stops and then starts to fall down v is uh, equal to zero which is final velocity so just put this in equations of motion and you'll be able to get the following formula over here i'll be just putting a box around them it's not necessary that you memorize them necessarily but yeah you can instead memorize the method that I've put over here. This is very important. V is equal to zero, U is equal to zero, in which case, and so on. Next, I'll be moving on to this type of problem, which is like, let's say a non-standard graph, like A versus V is asked, and so on, or acceleration versus X, so on. You have to make sure that you use this, that which is given, let's say, a straight line. As you know, Y is equal to MX plus C represents a straight line. So this question, a similar question, based on this, has been asked in KCT. You have to solve the past paper to get an idea. So over here, M should be replaced with, the, you know, dy by dx which means the slope depends on what graph they've asked and you have to find out c value and then you have to resubstitute it you can solve a problem to get an idea so resubstitution after finding value of c i'll just write it over here so that you have an idea so the next part would be um of course graphical information so i'll be zooming in a bit for this as you know slope of vt graph is acceleration dv by dt similarly slope of xt graph which is dx by dt dx by dt dx by dt basically is going to be velocity and for area this is area be careful area under vt graph is x and area under at graph as you know is not velocity but difference in velocity as you know v minus u so yeah that part i'm um, hoping it's clear so i'll be moving on to the next part which is going to be inertial versus non-inertial frame so this is something which you might know inertial frame is when the observer observer and the plane have no difference in velocity whereas as you can see i put an x whereas non-inertial frame is when observer observer and plane have a difference in velocity finally the concept of g effective i'll be going on to the concept of g effective so this is very important to understand as it includes the concept of pseudo force and kct 2023 2022 it has been asked actually my uh, year it had been asked so yeah this year itself you can solve the question to get an idea or you can actually put this under newton's laws of motion but i'm covering it here because it's a concept which can be understood over here too so let's say a ball is dropped inside a lift which is going upwards with an acceleration a so in this case you have to know that the pseudo force acts downwards a to make sure that the whole system is at rest so when a is acting downwards and the ball is already falling with g g effect will be g plus a i hope you understood and the same way when we take a lift which in which the ball is again falling downwards but the lift this time is also going downwards with uh, let's say acceleration a pseudo force acts upwards this time so this pseudo force will be a and as you know vector this is falling downwards with g and this is going pseudo force is upwards with a so g minus a would be g effective so with this, we I have completed um, you know kinematics part one, which is motion in a straight line. So if you really like the video, I hope you can like share it with your friends, like the video, subscribe. It'll benefit everyone as a whole. And yeah, you can wait for the next sessions. Thanks a lot for watching. I appreciate it. See you.